Isn't that cool looking? Want to see how it's made? Follow me. Okay. Well, I picked up all the wood from Woodworker Source in Tempe. Great place to go. Give them a shout out. And uh, we've got the walnut. We've got the maple, which is the whitish wood here. And we've got paduk, which is the reddish color there. I cut these into strips, just waiting for the customer to decide if he wants 16 inch wide, 14 inch wide, or 12 inch wide. The next step now are, once he decides on the width, I'll get these all together. I'll make sure that everything lines up nice and perfect, straight edge everything. If I've got any issues, I'll fix it now. So when I put it together, get ready to glue it up, everything's gonna match up nice and tight with no openings in the seams. Once that's all done, I'll run it through the planer a few times to give you a nice, perfect, flat, smooth surface on both sides. And then after that, I'll be getting ready to route the edges with a nice little rounded edge to keep away from the sharpness. And then I'll be ready to put the finish on it. Now's the perfect time to subscribe and like and hit that little bell. That way, every time I create a new masterpiece, it'll alert you that there's a new one to look at. And I enjoy uh, any comments that you might make. So. Let's stick around until we get the decision from the customer, and then we'll move to the next step. Make sure that you're using, um, I like to use Tight Bond Premium 3. That's, uh, that's a very strong wood glue, stronger than the wood itself, and it's food safe, which is important. But I wanted to show you a little bit of a tip. Some of you might hate sanding and grinding as much as I do, and peeling off the old glue and stuff, or when you're using these boards, little pieces of wood that you have for scraps, put them on both sides to keep it level with itself so there's not a high or low board. But as you can see, there's a dent in that board. You don't want that dent in this board. And you don't want to compress the grains because then if you stain it later on, it won't accept the stain as well as the surrounding area. Anyway, <clears throat> to help save a lot of the glue cleanup, I take some wax paper, various sizes. And what I do is on both ends, as I'm getting ready to glue it up, I want to use little pieces of scrap wood underneath and on top, and then I will clamp it. But before I put the wood down, I put the plastic down. Thusly, that's a bunch of these pieces that I got laying around here. Put that underneath. And then I put the clamp on and I check it to make sure that it's perfectly level bottom and top and do the same thing for the middle and for the end just to make sure that everything looks good if you find that you got a height spot here and there then you can use that to make it perfectly level once so you've got i'm going to go ahead and glue this up i'm not going to bore you with watching that whole process because it takes a little bit of time but then i'll come back once we're ready to take the clamps off and you'll see how easy it is to take these boards off all right well it's been a couple of hours let's see how this works using the wax paper to make my job easier comes out really easy. And the next paper just peels off. So much easier than breaking out the chisel. So just a nice little tip. Wax paper could be your friend. Okay gang, so I'm getting ready to put this together. My customer's finally decided that he likes this pattern here where I've got the, the walnut, one of the white stripes of maple, the next walnut that comes over the striping here, and then another piece of walnut on the side. So at this point, I'm going through each strip very carefully, one at a time, clamp them together, just to make sure that everything's nice and neat, and that I don't have any gaps or holes. Okay, well, I just got back from the wood shop over at Woodworker Source over there in Tempe. I had them run it through the planer. I had to have them run it through the planer because the customer wanted the 16 inches wide. My planer only goes to 12 inches wide. So once I had this all put together and glued up, took it down there, they did a nice job of it. Once we got this done, I'll be doing some sanding. Oh, I love sanding, don't you? There's lots, hours and hours of sanding. Just a real light one because this came out really nice off the planer. So I'm just gonna use a little bit. I'm gonna use a damp cloth and go across it a few times. That helps to raise up some grain. And you can actually kind of feel where it gets, I don't know, fuzzy might be the word. Then you can sand it down again to get those high spots and eventually get it nice and smooth. 
and you start putting the finish on it. I'm gonna give a little bit of a shameless plug. This is the stuff I'm gonna be using. Elixir Wax Wood Oil. I have yet to try it, but I saw a demonstration on it and I was really impressed with the demonstration. Okay, the demonstration that they gave me was to take something like an old credit card or something like this, and use that to spread it around. A little bit easier than doing some other stuff. So I'm just gonna pour a little bit out and then I'm gonna move it around with this, let it soak in, give it about 20 minutes or so to soak in really good. Then I'll take a clean cloth, buff it on down, and then I'll get ready to turn it over and apply it to the other side. This is the demonstration they did for uh, Woodworker Source. I've become a member, so I'm part of the Rosewood Club. It gives me 10% every time I go in there. So I'm gonna pour just a little bit, and we'll see how this goes. Again, this is my first time. So let's see how this looks. Really making that color pop out, isn't it? Sure, I'm gonna feed this video up so you don't have to spend the whole time watching this, but it's kind of satisfying to watch, isn't it? You see, doing it like this with a card helps to make sure you're not using so much because if you put it on with a cloth and rub it around, the cloth just sucks out a whole bunch of this stuff. Idea. Oh, you had to go there, huh? Okay, so let's put a little bit more. Spread it around very sparingly. Might not take so much this time because it's the second coat, so it might not soak in quite as much. So I might have to play a little more, but I'm not sure. Let's see how far this goes. Isn't this fun? Between this and sanding, this is the most fun I've had in a long time, right? And then let it sit for a couple hours more. Back and do the final little light sanding, and then a final coat that'll be a lot thinner than this one. Well, Look here, I've got the final finish on it. I've attached the handles, which is nice. Got the feet underneath, set it down, no rocking, nice and solid, and uh, we're all good. Came out really nice after I put that final finish on it, it's got a nice feel to it. I'm sure they're going to enjoy using this as a charcuterie. Put a lot of ham and cheese and other kinds of things on there. So built this for a friend of mine, Dave. I hope you enjoy it. Hope your wife gets a lot of use out of it. And uh, hope to see you on the next video. So don't forget, subscribe and like for Doc's Projects. See you next time.